We want to revisit one last time the crowd or the cross. And we but what yes. No, no, don't get it. Done. If we want to follow the crowd, we might think that we're paying attention to other people because, after all, in a crowd there are other people. But following the crowd is really turning our vision inward. It's turning all our attention inward. It's turning all of our senses inward. Because following the crowd is all about how I feel. It's all about what I want. It's about, do other people accept me? Do other people like me? Following the cross, you might think your entire focus is on Jesus and that sacrifice, his passion, his death, his resurrection, his ascension. And that's true. But we are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. And so focusing on the cross is in fact focusing on all of these other people that are around us. Our attentions are outward. We don't care what we want. We don't care how we feel. We care about what other people need, sometimes to survive. We give them love. We give them community, companionship. We give them food, we give them shelter. We talked this week about the crowd or the cross. If you were at one of our workshops, we talked about the crowd at the cross. Our challenge today as people of mission is when we leave this room, when we leave this event, our job is to bring the crowd to the cross. Shannon was saying earlier, you can't just keep it inside. You can't say, wasn't this a great experience? And then you walk out the door and all of that energy stays here. We're going to have Mass a little later this morning. And we're going to intimately receive Jesus in Holy Communion. You cannot keep that to yourself. That communion is not just you and Jesus. That communion is you and the whole church. It's you and all of humanity. It's not the crowd or the cross. It's not the crowd at the cross. It's everybody. We need to bring that crowd to the cross. It's a hard challenge. Very hard. St. Francis of Assisi is credited with these words, whether or not he actually said them. I'm certain that he lived them. Preach the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. You think about preaching as maybe what we're doing up here or a, a homily at Mass. 99.9% .9 of preaching the gospel is just what you're doing every moment of every day. How you are relating with the other people around you. It's such a tough task. And Shannon was saying, sometimes we're not going to like what we're called to do or, or where we're sent to go. But he's absolutely right. You have to have faith and trust you have to have the eyes to look, to know that you're being called, and the faith in your heart and in your soul to know that when you're called, it's going to change you. You're not going to know where you're going. You're not going to know who you're going to see when you get there. You're not, you're not even going to know what you're going to do. It'll all be okay. So we want to end this last keynote this morning with a song prayer. It's called, We Will Go, Lord. The words are very simple. You might look at the slide for a second to figure them out, but you're going you're gonna to know them quick enough. 
So we invite you this morning to pray with us. And when you get the hang of this simple song, to enter into that state of prayer. And if that means for you, closing your eyes and feeling that presence of Jesus, you can do that. If that means for you, holding the hand of the person next to you or putting your arm around your shoulder and recognizing the presence of Christ in this community that's gathered this morning, you can do that. But whatever you do, don't just sing these words because Warren's up here saying, please sing with us. Don't just sing them because you like to sing, but sing these words because they're a prayer. Sing these words because you're asking of God and listening for God. We will go, Lord, where you would have us go. We will do what you would have us do.